It came to me in a dream, from beyond the realm of sleep, where abysmal tides lick at black shores, an invitation. my neck there hung a key, an heirloom inherited from my kin, from those who fed me to the jaws of the orphanage, and though I hated them, I was utterly dependent upon their parting gift. It offered comfort, though I did not know why. The boys would try to take it from me, rip it from its cord, but they could not. It would not be taken. One night, as I wandered the realms of sleep, I felt the key slip from my neck. The world was warm and silent and wet. I breathed the stench of salt marsh, felt the lick of eels about my ankles. Ahead, I saw a man and a woman, joined by hand, their faces concealed in the eternal twilight of the dream world. But for a hint of some abnormality in the flesh, a curious pair of apertures at their necks. The openings flapped as if submerged in the deeps of some watery chamber. They spoke words I did not understand. And when I awoke, the heirloom, my birthright, is gone. I could not mourn its loss, for I did not know its lock, its home, just as I did not know mine. the jaws of the orphanage. Where I could not escape its walls in the waking world, I found escape in sleep, deep releasing slumber. One night a herald came to me, spoke my name, he told me not to hate the grime slick walls, but to hearken to them, become like them, resolute, hard, unyielding, cold. And though I did not need to, I listened. As a young man I trusted in logic, sound reason and the brutal laws of nature. For a long time I regarded superstition as a product of the powerless, the foolish, the blind. I no longer had dreams. I wielded reality like a machete beating my way through the rainforest of life with cruel determination. Others less fortunate suffered at my hand, but it did not matter, for I was man. And my will was all. And where I once had no control, I now wielded it over others. I sought to build a kingdom in league with the cold cogs of industry, I rose to become a tyrant, more loathsome than those who had raised me in that frigid dungeon of the orphanage. I numbered among the elite, the overlords of the world. I believed I was one of them, for that was what I was told. I was told many things. I clung to them as an abandoned mariner clings to driftwood. But deep beneath the mariner's feet, in the vault of the ocean, festered the truth. Something long denied. I did not belong. I was an alien in stranger seas, afraid, forgotten, lost. Then, one night, in the chasm of sleep, a greater will emerged. One whose face I could not see, a 
wrapped me in its tentacles, dragged me screaming from the kingdom I built guiltlessly on the backs of men and women far more humane. industry, and pined instead for a warm, silent place, far removed from the clamor of civilization. I abandoned the world of man, as swiftly as it had once me. My contemporaries spat scorn and turned their backs. It did not matter, for I no longer needed them. I forgot my will, my yearning for an empire, and I retreated into isolation. I became a shadow. Alone and from the westward window of my home upon the moors, I would look out upon the fens with an eager longing I did not comprehend. Sometimes I thought I heard words when eels whipped in the shallows, strange broken utterances in foul forgotten tongues, yet beautiful comforting in their way, and at times, brotherly. When the fishermen emptied their nets upon the banks, I wretched and turned away, revolted. The act pained me, grieved me like the loss of some familiar whose company I had never known. I fell to the floor, fetal and forlorn, and at once the lilting tides of sleep claimed my soul and carried it far from familiar shores to the domain of dreams. Beyond the realm of sleep, fear had a voice, a face, a smile. It showed me things, things from beyond the veil, from beyond what was known. Ruined temples crumbling beneath heavy skies, Starless nights, inhabited by wandering, roving moons. Forgotten, desolate landscapes where smoking monoliths choke the horizon. Hostile, barren plains where sentinels claw hungrily at the sky. crimson oceans and technology unfathomable then from the gloom there appeared two wardens dressed in the garments of the sea beyond lay a swelling verdant chamber and beneath that a great stone city its strident horns beckoned, its banners waved in briny fathoms. A welcoming levy awaited, their eyes cast upward at a canopy of roiling waves. And a sunken key, deep in the mire. My birthright. I reached for it, but it slipped from my grasp. I was not worthy. Then it called to me, a sickly siren. It came from the marshes carried on its briny breath over the moors to find me upon waking, and though the song was somehow sweet, I found I could not hark to its promises, for I feared there was no city, no heralds piping in the deep, just death in the guise of a dream. 
monotonous thrum. The heartbeat of the salt marsh quaked the foundations of the land, and abruptly, like a blind fool, I marched to its drum, traversed the rotten plains, the desolate swamps, guardians of the fringes of civilization. There, upon the mire, I searched for the gates. For a day I wandered, tore at the fabric of the world, but I could not find them. They would not be found. In the demise of dusk, I saw a light, dancing like a dervish in the mud. Its emerald luster had me scrambling like some crustacean across the salt flats until I came to the thing, my birthright, the key to the crime slick gates. Snatched from my neck in the night by some phantom? No. Threads of recall slowly clambered forth. Something I had tossed into the deep vaults of memory long ago. The morning after its loss, I remembered a stench. It survived my dream, woke with me in the realm of reality. It emanated, oozing from my heels, reeking beneath fingernails. I had walked the marsh in my sleep, buried the heirloom under some strange instruction from heralds without faces, and I knew why. I was now ready to receive it. I took it up, the heirloom long lost and forgotten. Its dark song sang a thousand laments in tongues ancient and unknown. It yearned to be returned to its lock, a stone city beneath the waters. It called, goaded me like oxen to black pastures. Voices whispered in the gloom. The tongues were no longer alien, but my own. Fear now a mute ally in the denouncement of the waking world. I had come to the domain of the mire, to my kingdom. I had come home.